Good morning. <laughs> I am gonna say before I start that I do not own the rights to the music in the background. I just like listening to worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are so, so good, God. I will sing of your goodness, God. Hallelujah. All my life. All my life. You have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, God. Even when I didn't see it. Even when I didn't hear it, feel it, know it. You were there. You were good. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, come this morning like a flood. Minister, speak to my heart. Use me as a vessel. Speak your... Only that. Only that which you would have us to hear. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so, so good. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Hi, babe. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. 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 Uh. Hallelujah. God is so good. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. <laughs> no other way to do it. Hmm. Hallelujah. Well, 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 well. So, I am going to get started. It's cloudy and a little rainy in Maui. And I've been praying for the last week that God would let it pour down rain. <laughs> For three days. I just want three days of nonstop rain. I don't know why three. That's just the number that comes to me. Three. And after that, it's all good. But rain brings a refreshing, not just to the land, but to my soul. My phone keeps on doing that reconnect thing, so I'm not sure what's going on with the internet. But anyway, it's Friday. I love Fridays. I'm so glad it's Friday. Yay. Um, welcome to Women of War Mornings with God. And I'm going to get started. I'm just going to get started. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. And this is Jesus talking because the words is in red. <laughs> it says... <laughs> And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So Jesus is asking a question. You call me Lord, but you don't do what I say. Why is that? Verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them not, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. I mean, that's a hard, heavy storm, amen, vehemently, and could not shake it for its foundation was upon a rock. 
Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. It doesn't say slowly. It doesn't say it took time. It says immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me bring this message. So last night when I went to bed, you know, I'm already thinking about the message and, and the things and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to me. And um, so, you know, often Jesus spoke in parables. He did that so that the reader could understand easily. You know, it's like a parable is a short and a simple story that teaches a religious or moral lesson. It's kind of like with us. We teach, you know, we, we share. Um, for us in today's world, you know, God uses our testimony as a parable, so to speak, right? We share, we share it to bring forth the message of how God delivered us, how God healed us, how God brought us out of the fire. So we're giving this story because it has a religious or a relational or a moral lesson in it, amen, that connects us with God, that shows us how good God is in bringing us that freedom, amen. So what is Jesus trying to point out in this parable? The foolish builder, which is in verse 49, is someone who built their house, so to speak, on the sand, is what I saw in my head, or in the mud on a little slope. And when the high tide came in for the sand, or the first big storm came on that mud, <laughs> it all fell apart and it fell apart immediately. Why? Because they are hearers of the word, but they're not doers. So. It's as if they really have no foundation to stand on when things come up. Amen. Because they don't obey the word, they are crushed under the pressure. And it's crushed immediately. So when we're going through things, you know, a title, a, a title, a, a trial, I'm sorry, a trial comes, a tribulation comes, a test comes, something comes. You know, health, maybe death, maybe relationships, things happen. You know, a sick child, an upset co-worker, any of When those things happen, instead of taking it to God in prayer, we react in our flesh. Why? Because our foundation is not in the Word. Amen. Ephesians 4, 26 says this. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And verse 27 says, neither give place to the devil. So when we are going through trials and tribulations and when we have something that comes our way that happens when somebody says something about us that we don't like when when our health is affected when we have a relationship issue with one of our kids one of our family members when somebody dies you know all these different things when it happens if our foundation is not mm -mm -mm, if our foundation is not built on the word then it tells us here He's like a man without a foundation built and house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently. That means when the enemy comes, he beats vehemently. Amen. And immediately it fell. Immediately. If our foundation is built like a foolish man where we just, I, I, yeah, I know what the word says. 
I know what the word says. I know what the word says. But we don't go any deeper. So we don't have, we're not able to stand on the word because we don't really trust it. We don't really know it. We just hear it. But we're not doers of it. Then, good morning, Reverend Milani. Then when the storms of life come, when the enemy shoots his fiery darts at us, we can't stand. Because we are like, I said earlier, built our foundation, we just laid it on the beach. We looked at that and thought, oh my God, I love the beach. I'm going to build my house right here. We didn't consider high tide. We didn't consider underneath shifting. We didn't consider any of that. Or it could be we see this piece of land and we think, oh, this is a great place to, to farm. So we put the house right there where the river runs down, right there, right there on that little bank. We don't think that that river is going to get high, that it's always going to be muddy and wet. So when the storms come, if we're not built on the foundation of the word, it destroys everything immediately, the Bible tells us. Immediately. We're taken down immediately. Amen. Good morning, Steph. If our foundation, however, is like the wise man, which is in verse 48, then we can get angry without sinning. How? Because when we get angry or when we get hurt or when we get offended or when these things come, these trials, these tribulations, these tests, these temptations, when they come, we can go to God. Amen. We can go to God. We can give it to God so that we don't sin. We do the word. Good morning, Pastor Cynthia. We do the word. We forgive the offense. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why do we get angry? Because we get hurt. Why do we get hurt? Because we're offended. We take offense. And when we take offense and we react in the flesh, we are like the foolish man that built his house with no foundation. Why? Because we're reacting in the flesh instead of reacting or responding with the word. Amen. The wise builder in verse 48 is like someone who hears the word and obeys it. We got to trust. We got to obey. We got to do the word. And we got to stand up against the devil. If we are being doers of the word, then our foundation is strong. We can withstand any storm. Any storm. Let me read that verse for you again. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. What is the rock? The word of God. What's the difference between the two builders? The foolish builder and the wise builder. The wise builder had a deep relationship with the word. Who's the word? Jesus. Jesus was the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the word. So if we have a relationship with Jesus, and if we are doers of what he tells us to do, then our foundation is strong. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Our foundation is strong. But if we are going to be like the foolish builder, and we just build wherever, whenever, because we want to, then immediately when the trials come, immediately. The Bible says that. I'm not saying that. The Bible, Jesus said, immediately it was destroyed. It was destroyed. Simply listening to the word. Good morning, Sister Colleen. Simply listening to the word, it's not enough. It's not enough. We can't say we're Christians, attend church, read the Bible, do all this stuff that is Christianese and not do what the Bible tells us to do. You know, like the walking dead. We can walk. We can say, I'm Christian. I believe Jesus came. I believe he died. I believe he rose. Yep, yep. God is good. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Will that help us stand? 
when the enemy shoots the fiery darts at us? If that's how we're living, I'll tell you right now, that kind of lifestyle is not going to stand up against the wiles and the schemes of the devil. If we're building our lives on things that look good or feel good, I'm reading this because this, the Holy Spirit gave me this and I had to write it down. If we're building our lives on things that look good or feel good or just feel right at the time and ignore the warnings or don't listen to God's wisdom about the situation, we will be washed away at every trial. Let me read it again. I'm speaking to myself here, peeps, not just you guys. I'm speaking to me. Let me read it again. If we are building our lives on things that look good or feel good or just feel right at the time and we ignore the warnings or don't listen to God's wisdom about the situation, we will be washed away at every trial because only God has the solution. Only God has the answers. And it's all found in the word. If we don't have a relationship with the word, the word being Jesus, if we don't have a relationship with the word, we ain't got nothing to stand on. It's just fluff. It's just the foolish man. I don't want to be foolish, guys. I want to be wise. Past things come up and we're a mess. You know, sickness attacks and we're a mess. Something gets said to us or about us and somebody else repeats it and we're a mess. <laughs> you know, we're knocked down at every turn. And when we get knocked down at every turn, we start to feel sorry for ourselves. Oh, oh, let me tell you what. I had a feel sorry moment yesterday. I had a feel sorry for myself moment. You know, pity party, balloons, the whole nine yards. It was all there. The devil was there. He brought the balloons. Hello. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. My husband came in and I started sharing with him some things and he got quiet, but I saw his face. <laughs> How many of you ladies that are married know when your husband wants to say something, you can see it on his face, even if he's not saying it? <laughs> and so I kept telling him, say it, say it. Come on, just say it, say it. I might need to hear it. <laughs> and he said what I say <laughs> to my kids mostly and my grandkids. <laughs> put on your boots. Lace them up. Put on your big girl panties and get up and walk. Imagine that. My husband used what I say against me. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I know you, it wasn't against me. But when he said that, I thought to myself, in my head, I could see, I could see the word of God popping the pity party balloons that I had allowed the devil to bring in. <laughs> Why? Because the word. I have a relationship with the word and I want to be a wise builder, not a foolish builder. Amen. Let me encourage you today with this. Let's go examine our foundations. Okay. Cause let me tell you why I was examining mine last night <laughs> while I'm laying there in the dark <laughs> and I'm praying and I'm examining. And then I got up this morning and started to write cause the Holy Spirit started to speak. So let's examine our foundation. Let's be the wise builder who carefully plans our house. Let's investigate the building site. Let's make sure that it'll sustain the foundation. You know, let's judge the soil. Let's make sure that there's no flood zones in the area that can take our house down. Let's listen and obey the builder. What am I saying? We are the house. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost lives on the inside of us. We house him. Amen. <laughs> so let's allow him today to examine our foundation, 
to show us where we might have some cracks. You know, what are the cracks? Hurts, offenses, unforgiveness, angry at someone, holding a grudge, bitterness, resentment, all of those things. Those are cracks in the foundation. It makes it weak. Let's allow the word. Let's allow the word. The word. Jesus. Let's allow the word to bring the healing that we need. To bring the deliverance that we need. To bring the freedom that we need to release the people that we hold in unforgiveness. Let's allow the word to make our foundation strong. Let's allow the word to infiltrate and penetrate those cracks. You know, we can live our lives confidently knowing that our foundation is solid if we live according to the word. To the word. We got to remember, it's not just about hearing. It's about doing. We have to do the word. We have to allow the word to build our foundations. And maybe some of us feel like, oh my gosh, my foundation's a little shaky. I got some cracks. I got some things. Ladies, you're not alone. We all have some things. We all have some cracks that we need the word to come in and fix. There is nothing else in this world that can fix the foundation, build the foundation and make it strong, except the word. We gotta let that word go deep. We gotta be relational with Jesus because he's 100% relational. Our God is 100% relational. And we have to let that word, the word, that came and became flesh and dwelt among us, be our foundation. Amen. Let's take time today to just sit and ask God, do I have cracks in my foundation? Is my foundation weak? Is it shaky? I need it to be strong. Holy Ghost, show me. Show me how to make the foundation strong, to allow the word to make my foundation strong. Amen. <laughs> I love the word. It brings freedom. It brings deliverance. It brings healing. It brings life. It brings love. It brings compassion. It brings grace. It brings mercy. Because our God, our Father, our Daddy, our Abba, our El Elyon, he is all of that. He is love. He is grace. He is mercy. He is compassion. He is wise. And he wants our foundations to be strong, built on his word. So when the Wows and schemes and trials and tribulations and tests and fiery darts come from the enemy. We can stand having done all to stand. Why? Because we have all the power over. We have the power. Let's just say the power. The word says the power over all the power of the enemy. And if our foundation is strong, then that word stands true. 
We have power over all the power of the enemy. And no matter what he brings, our foundation is strong and we will overcome. Amen. Amen. You know, in order to have that strong foundation, in order to have a foundation, period, in God, you have to be born again. you got to be saved. What does that mean? That means accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Simple. It's very simple. It's believing that Jesus came and died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. That means if you accept Jesus in your heart, you have a place in heaven. Your name gets written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Today is a good day to accept Jesus. And if you want to accept Jesus, click on the link. It'll take you to my webpage, The Salvation. I encourage you to say the prayer. And then find a local church. Get hooked up because we need one another. You know, we need to stand with, with each other. We need to pray for one another. Pray and stand and link up. Amen. A local church will help you do that. They will help you become all that you can be. You will meet up with people that are like-minded so your faith can grow because God has a call for each one of us. Amen. He has good things for us. So, say that prayer. Get your foundation built by the word and grow. Amen. It's Friday. I pray you all have a blessed, amazing weekend. Ladies and my hubby, I love you guys so much. I pray for you all and your ministries daily. And I will see you all again on Monday at 7, right here, Women of War Mornings with God. Be blessed. <laughs>